Hello everybody, my name is Ulrich with UFixit Auto and today I'm going to be showing you how to change your speakers in your 2000 GMC Sierra 1500. This is going to be an in-depth guide and all the products that I use today are going to be linked down in the description below. First thing now is we're going to look at the speakers. I have a few examples here to show you. Now the rears are going to be these 4x6s. I chose the Kappas because my truck is going to be amplified so there's going to be more wattage going to the speakers. Now you're going to have to choose between component or coaxial speakers. The difference is going to be that the tweeter is going to be mounted right here on the center of the woofer as opposed to where on the component it'll allow you to place the component so anywhere else that you want on the truck. Here you have the woofer, here you have the tweeters, and they also come with a crossover which is used to separate your highs and mids. It's a very simple process. Here you have your inputs, your positive and your negative. In the middle you're going to see WF, which stands for woofer, like these guys here. And on the right you'll see TW for tweeter. The truck already has a built-in crossover so we won't have to worry about where to mount the crossover on this truck. And with that we'll get started. First we're going to take off this locking cap, which just pulls right out. And next we're going to pop up the driver controls simply just by putting a pry tool underneath and popping it right up. And we're going to undo these clips on the bottom simply by pushing down on them and pulling straight out. The third one's a little different. I like to push down with the flathead screwdriver while with my left hand pulling out the harness. And then set your controls aside. There's a 7mm bolt right over here that you have to remove. Once it gets to a certain point you should be able to unscrew it by hand. Over here by where you grab the door, there is a 7mm bolt right here that you have to remove. And then you remove this trim piece by popping it off. You may need to use a pry tool to take it off. You will see here that it does have a hook end that will grab onto the front side. Next you're going to want to pop off this trim piece up here. You can just pull it out. This also has a hook towards the bottom so you just have to slide it up. From there you can pop up the door and there's two more wires you need to worry about. The courtesy light. You can pop off the light or you could take off the wire harness by pushing up so the tab slides right out. And the last wiring harness is the tweeter. You just push down on the tab and it should separate right out. Here's a closer look at the push tab. Now I'm going to remove the two screws here. They seem to be aftermarket, but with that, that'll allow you to sneak the tweeter right out. I'm going to be reusing this tweeter plate in order to mount the new tweeter. I will have to cut out and customize this tweeter mount in order to get the new tweeter to fit, but first we're going to remove the tweeter by prying on it until it pops out. And to remove the speaker, you just have to push down on this tab and the speaker comes right out. Just push down on this speaker connector and it should pop right out. If you go with a coax speaker, you're not going to need this step, but we are going to make a cutout so that way we can mount this tweeter adapter. This adapter will allow you to mount this adapter on top so that way you can angle where you want the tweeter to point. And we're going to want it to point up so that way the voice will shoot upwards. So we're going to want to grab our adapter and mark where we're going to cut out. I'm using pink since that was the only marker I could find. Now you can use whatever method you want to cut it. I'm going to be using a Dremel with a cutting wheel and I'm just going to make different marks. And then I'm going to attach a sander so that way I could smooth out the hole. Be sure to test fit your tweeter adapter to make sure it's a nice fit. Once you get a nice and snug fit, I'm going to make sure that the adapter can tilt upwards. The speakers also came with this ring, so that way you could secure the adapter. It just twists on. And with the adapter secure, we can move on. We can grab the second adapter, put it in place, grab the screw from the tweeter. These stock tweeters should already have these attached on them, and luckily they're the perfect fit for our new tweeters. And then we just secure the tilting adapter in place. And once it's adjusted where we want it to be, now we can grab our new tweeter and put it in the slot. 
Make sure to align the tab with this little insert. And then it slides in and twists to secure it in place. And now it's ready to go back in. We're just gonna feed it through the speaker hole up into position, put in the two screws, and then we're going to tighten them down with a Phillips head screwdriver. Mine was facing down so I needed to adjust it. And that's it for the tweeter. And that's it for the door. We just need to move on to the wiring harness. We're just gonna snip off the old harness for the tweeters and then we're gonna snip off the harness for the woofer. It's important to note that the tan is the positive and the gray is the negative wires. We're just gonna strip the insulation. You just have to grab your favorite pair of wire strippers and just remove about an inch worth. And we're gonna be using red for positive. And we're gonna be using blue to signify our negative wire. And just crimp it using the wire crimping tool. And we're gonna do the same thing to our woofer cables. But since my speakers require a different terminal end, we're gonna be using these guys. Be sure to note which ones yours use. And I'm gonna use the same red for positive, blue for negative. All right, now with the speaker wires ready, we just have to place our speaker in place. As you can see, there are no mounting holes, so we're gonna to have to create some. You can use self-tapping screws, but I'm gonna be using the ones that came with the speaker. So I'm gonna be using a drill in order to get the hole going. I'm just using a drill bit that is close to the size of the screw. And now we're gonna position the speaker where we're gonna want it to go. If you have a center punch, then feel free to use that in order to mark the holes. And since I don't have one currently, we are going to just position it right where we're gonna want it to go and then drill right through. And make sure there's no glass behind the speaker. After drilling the holes, we're just going to screw in the top two screws just to make sure everything fits. And then we are gonna have to remove them in order to make sure that we can put our speaker wires in place. Make sure that your speaker wire is securely placed on the speaker so that they don't slip when you put it back in. And then you're just gonna screw in the speaker, securing it in place. It's time for the door panel to go back on, so you just attach the speaker wire for the tweeters. If your speaker wire ends don't have insulation, be sure to wrap it with electrical tape so that they don't touch. You slide the door panel back on, and then you're ready to put in the seven millimeter screws just below the handle here and right over here. Then you attach all three harnesses to the controls and they just slide back in until you hear the click. After all three are in, then you just slide it back into place. Attach the trim piece around the door handle and then this triangular trim piece right above the door. And then you repeat this process on the passenger side. And now we're gonna move on to the rears. From here, we're gonna remove the seven millimeter bolts that are located in the cup holder and where you grab onto the door. Mine were missing, so I grabbed some from the junkyard. And then you're also gonna to have to remove this piece. Mine was also missing. From here, the panel just pops out. You just grab it from the top and just pull. Make sure to work your way around the door. And then the panel just comes right off. And yeah, I don't like that. Look how dirty this is. I'm gonna clean this up. There we go, that's a lot better. Now the speaker is the same as the front. You just push on this tab and the speaker should slide right out. And then you just push on the tab in order to remove the wire harness. Or you could just snip off the wire harness like I'm doing here, strip off the insulation. I will have the speaker wire information down in the description. For these speaker wires, I'm gonna be using an insulated tip just so that it's not making any contact with any metal. And per usual, blue is negative and red is positive. Just crimp the terminal ends on, making sure they're nice and snug. And then we'll attach the negative on the light blue. Make sure that's nice and secure. Grab our new speaker, make sure 
The bigger end is the positive, smaller end is the negative. And then we position it in place. Position it so we can drill out the holes. Make sure to drill out the right space depending on the size of your bolt. And like the other speakers, I'm just putting in the top two to secure it in place. So that way I could drill out the bottom two holes with much more ease. And then securing it in place. And now we're done with this door. So all we gotta do is attach the door back on. The panel just snaps into place. Make sure to work your way around the door. Take your time and make sure it's all snapped in to where it needs to be. Put your seven millimeter screws in position and secure them to the door. You can take the extra step to grab your favorite interior cleaner and clean off the door panel. Make sure to avoid the grill so that way any cleaner doesn't get into the speakers. And with a microfiber cloth, just clean off the area. You can also spray directly onto the microfiber cloth to avoid spraying into the speaker. And lastly, just attach this trim piece back on. If you have four doors, then you could repeat the process on the other side. But since I have three doors, then what we're going to have to do is take off this 7mm bolt. And if you want to avoid moving the seats and the seat belt, then what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to pry back the door panel here. And you can have somebody hold this back while you work on the speaker. Uh, it is a little tight, but the door panels tend to be a little flexible. It's the same process here. You just push on the tab over here in order to remove the speaker. I had to pry mine off using a uh, flathead screwdriver since it was kind of stuck on there. If you do decide to make a little bit more room for yourself, then to remove the seats, all you have to do is remove these two 18 millimeter bolts on the left and on the right. And that's all there is to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, then please like, subscribe, and share. Of course, all the products that I used in this video will be linked down in the description below. And anything you guys would like to see, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you.